In the previous tutorial, we created a project in Siemens TIA portal. We've added two devices to it, one PLC and one HMI. And we've ended the tutorial by configuring the PLC and going online with a real system. Today, our goal is going to be to configure some PLC tags, to configure a basic program in program blocks, to go online with both the PLC and HMI simulations in order to be able to see those tags change and react to some of the push buttons that we're going to deploy on the HMI. Without any further delay, let's get started. So our first step is going to be to configure the PLC tags we're going to use. We can do so by expanding the menu right here on the left hand side. We can go into show all tags when we can or we can go into the default data table. Let's select show all tags and start creating our PLC tags. So I'm going to start it off by creating push button one. In the tag table, as I've mentioned, we only have the default tag table. We can certainly create more, and that's something we're going to explore in later videos. That being said, since the only table we have available is that one, we're going to select that in the drop down. This is going to be a Boolean as the push button is only going to return a value of zero or one. And then on the address side, we want to make sure that instead of selecting this as an input, an output, we're going to select that as a memory bit. And once again, in a later video, we're going to talk about how to use a database for these specific tags. But for now, we're going to select M in this dropdown for the operand identifier and press on OK. We're also going to create three more tags, so push button two, same data table, Boolean address, so that's all correct. And then we're going to create two outputs that we're going to use on our HMI as well. So LED one and LED two. And just a brief mention, like I was saying, if we were to select input, this is going to directly map into our PLC input on the hardware side and Q is going to map on the output side. So if we were to use physical push buttons and indicators, those are definitely going to be the addresses. But since we're working with a simulation, memory bits are going to be the right way to go for now. Now that we have the tags in place, we can navigate to program blocks. Once again, on the left hand side, we can expand program blocks folder. And under this folder, we should initially find a main. So we're going to double click this main and we're going to find where ladder logic resides. So here I already have a network one. What I can start doing is creating an instructions. And so that's going to be in this menu right above. And so I can either drag and drop a normally open contact or an XIC instruction, or I can simply click on the instruction and based on where my cursor was, it's going to create a new instruction. We're going to have some question marks. If we double click this field and click on this little icon, we're able to select from one of the tags that we have created. So in this case, I'm going to select push button one. I'm going to create a simple program that's going to imitate a motor starter. So this is going to be followed by an XIO instruction and that's going to be push button number two. And last but not least, at the end of the rung, we're going to have an OT or output energize. And this is going to contain LED one. Now, in order to create a branch in Siemens PLC programming, you're going to create, you're going to click on this open branch. And you can also use the shortcut, which is going to be shift F8. And then we're going to place an XIC, which is, of course, based on the logic is going to be LED one as well. And then this rung is going to come back into the end of the XIC like so. And that's the logic for LED one. Now, as you probably know or have some experience with PLC programming, when this push button becomes pressed, this energizes LED one and then it's going to stay on until push button two is pressed. And we're going to write an adequate um, screen for that as well. I do want to scroll down as we've added logic for the LED one. We're going to create a very simple rung for LED2 as well. So here I'm just going to press uh, an XIC followed by an OTE. And in this case, I just want to see when push button two is pressed, I want to energize LED number two. Once again, this is for demonstration purposes. We will jump into some of these instructions a little bit later on. Something we should always do before we move on from PLC programming is compile our code and check for errors. We can do so by right-clicking on main, 
scrolling down to compile software. And then Tia Portal is going to double check that everything has been correct. And if you have any errors, make sure to resolve them before you move on to the next step. Our next step is going to be to define the HMI tags, just like we did for the PLC. So I'm going to collapse the PLC one folder. I'm going to look at the HMI one, and that's going to have the exact same structure as to not confuse the user. So once again, we're going to expand this HMI tags. I'm going to double click on show all tags. And here we're going to already find a tag that I've created. So I'm just going to delete this for a moment and we're going to add a new tag. So in our case, that's going to be push button one. I just want to keep consistent names to make it a little bit easier on the programming side. The data type, just like we had it on our PLC, is going to be of Boolean type. And connection is what's important and is what is going to make the connection between the PLC and HMI. And if you recall from the previous episode, we had set up an HMI connection one between the PLC and the HMI. So I'm going to select that and press on OK. And what that's going to bring up is the name of the PLC, which is PLC one. Since we only have one system, it's not going to be too confusing. And here we are required to select a PLC tag. So if I expand this little menu, what you'll find is that we can go into the default table and we can find the push button one tag that we've created previously. And this way the program knows that the push button one tag on the HMI side is linked to the push button one tag on the PLC side, which is extremely convenient and very different from the Rockwell software that is completely unaware of the different tags that have been set up in different systems. So this makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot because you do have one software that manages both of your PLC and HMI programs. So similarly for push button number two, we're going to select the exact same options as you would expect on the PLC tag. All we need to do is select push button two. And then I'm going to create the two LEDs, so LED one. Once again, you can have, or you can choose to create a different name tag on the HMI side than you would on the PLC. And that is purely a design decision at this point. I want to keep everything consistent. So we're going to call them the exact same. It already knows I'm going to go into LED2. And so I need to select my PLC tag, which is also going to be LED2. Press on OK. And those are the four tags that are now on the HMI. I'm just going to save the project as we should consistently with any software. At this point, we can populate the HMI screen that's going to host all of our elements. So I'm going to expand this screens folder. I'm going to navigate to the root screen. We can certainly create a new screen from which we're going to display these objects. But I believe that the root screen is more than adequate to serve that task. So here under elements, I'm going to find my button. I'm going to drag that out and drop it on the screen. I'm going to give this a label of push button one just to keep things simple. I'm going to select a button. One thing to pay attention to is if you select the screen behind you, the properties tab is going to be different. You do need to have the push button selected as indicated in the bar right here. And then we're going to add a function. So we certainly want to have a function based on a press and then on a release because what we're building is a momentary state push button. If you're familiar with that from any other devices, I'm going to add a function and in this case, just to demonstrate the entire menu of features, I'm going to expand this edit bit section and then set my bit. The tag is going to be push button one as one would expect. And then we also need to create the same function on the release side, except it's going to be a reset bit. So expand this reset bit and that's going to be for push button one. And the reason why we have this functionality in case you're familiar with the Rockwell factory talk view studio ME, when you drag out a momentary push button, it's going to have this built in. Whereas in factory talk view SE or side edition, you're going to be able to define these functions separately, just like you have in TIA portal. What I'm going to do now is either control C or right click and then copy this button. I'm going to then right click on the screen and paste the element. It's going to create an identical copy, which I'm going to rename first of all. So this is going to be push button number two. I'm going to select this push button because I do need to go back into my events. And so on press, this is going to toggle push button number two tag. Press on OK. 
and then on release i do want to toggle the exact same bit it's very important to get this right otherwise the logic isn't going to work so push button two is going to press and then release on push button to tag. We also need to animate a couple of LEDs. We can do this in multiple ways, but I'm going to use a basic object, which is a circle. So I'm going to drag and drop that uh, relatively close to the push buttons. This is definitely not an aesthetically pleasing screen. That being said, we navigate into animations and what we need to do is add an animation, double click on that double click on appearance and here we can select a tag based on which the animation is going to execute in my case this is going to be led one press on okay we do have a range of tags so here there's going to be a zero and the second option is going to be a one just like you would expect for a boolean tag when it's not pressed or when it's not energized it's going to have this grayish background i do want to change it for the energized state and that's going to be this bright green and then I'm going to select the same circle, control C. Once again, you can right click and use the buttons here, but the shortcuts are a little bit faster. Control C, control V. And we're going to place that right there. And we need to change this to LED2. Press on OK. I also want to change the background color just to make it a little bit different from the first one we've created. So this one's going to be red. I'm going to save the project and we're going to get into simulation. So to simulate our programs, we're going to simulate the PLC as well as an HMI. I'm going to right click the PLC and then here we can start simulation. Alternatively, once it is selected, there's going to be a little shortcut at the top. So I'm going to press on start simulation. You'll notice that you're going to get a couple of warnings. TIA portal wants to make sure that you are aware that you're entering simulation and you are not running this program on a live PLC in case you're making some changes. We're going to have to connect to a simulated device. So the same menu that we've looked at in the past is going to appear. We can press on start search and we should be able to see a simulated device, which is going to be right here. So device type simulation. We're going to press on load. It's going to perform the exact same checks that we've discussed in the last episode. I can press on load since everything looks to be okay. And we're going to press on finish. At this point in time, as you can see, I've got this little icon that allows me to start and stop the PLC. I also need to right click the HMI. As I've said, you can use the icon here but we can start simulation for the HMI as well. That's going to compile the program and make sure that there are no errors before it runs the screen. If everything's okay, you should see the two screens that we've created. I'm going to press run on the PLC side and I'm going to press on this push button one. As expected, the LED one is latched in based on our logic. If I press and I release push button two, the green LED disappears. If I hold down the push button two, based on the second ladder logic rung that we've created, the LED two is going to remain on. As soon as I release my mouse, it's going to turn off again. Once again, if I press PB1, it's going to turn on LED one. If I press momentarily PB2, it's going to turn off LED one. One last thing I do want to mention when you're simulating this. So in case you want to look at your code and you want to see exactly what it's doing in real time, we can open the PLC one, navigate under program blocks, reopen main, which we've configured before. And there's going to be this little icon, which is called monitoring on or off. So if you click this, you're going to see the current state of the tags and the rung in the logic. So if I bring back the HMI, as you can see here, the current or the metaphorical current in your PLC is not able to go through. So if I press this push button too, you'll see the status toggle on the screen. And if I press PB1, you'll notice that the current is going all the way through to the OT instruction, which is currently behind the HMI. And if we toggle this PB2, once again, you'll notice that it breaks the current in our code and de-energizes LED1. And similarly, if we scroll down to the second rung, all it does is if, while I'm holding PB2, it's going to energize LED2. If I release the mouse button, then it's going to de-energize LED2. So it makes it for a very convenient way to troubleshoot and see what the logic is doing.